part of what we have structured in this country is something on the one hand which is great, which is local control, which means we have many, many thousands and thousands of school districts, but they're funded locally as well, particularly for school facilities, different than their general you know, teacher budgets and material budget. Facilities are very local, and so if you're poor, if you have really old buildings, you may not have enough money within your district to afford the modernization uh, of your buildings. Does that need to change that funding mechanism in your mind? It really does. I mean, there's no way to address the structural inequity that we have between school districts without addressing how we fund them. What does your research show is the main reason for this? Is it the segregation? Is it the local control? I mean, what, why? Well, part of what's going on is our infrastructure is aged, right? It, it needs a much bigger investment. Where there was a huge boom in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the, the boomers, right? There was a big building enterprise that happened after the Second World War. But those buildings are, are like me. <laughs> They're old now. We know in this country is that we have structured bias into our school districts. Um, we've structured into our budgets, and it takes actually intentionality to overcome what's been historic and structured. It's not nothing. It doesn't just automatically go to something fair and equal, because frankly, everybody wants what's best for their children. And if you have more access, if you have more power, if you have more influence, you will get for your children what's best. It doesn't mean that everybody doesn't want what's best for their children, but you don't have the same kind of influence in the state houses, in the federal government, in your local, even because within school districts, large county districts, still you will find the kind of inequality among schools within one district, even for like a Miami-Dade County, for example, some of your large county districts that go across many uh, jurisdictions. We like to talk about equal opportunity for all. Do we have equal opportunity for all when it comes to schools in America? No, and I think that part of the problem that we've been facing in, in public education in general is that we have stopped paying attention to what the grown-ups are putting into the schools as quality. We're saying, well, if people want to go to that school, then it means it's got good quality, as opposed to, well, what are we putting in that school that means it has good quality? Do we have modern science labs? Do we have early childhood spaces that are appropriate? Are they all accessible for disabled children or adults? We're not evaluating quality in terms of our inputs. We're saying, well, how well are the kids doing? But frankly, that's a function of what we're giving them. So I think we, we know that we are not giving them equal opportunities because they don't have the, the programming, the staffing, or the facilities that is in any way equitable across um, districts.